morning everyone once again now it's time to begin the second session i request our guest of honor sri pramod dhara sir to chair the session now it's over to sudachari and her friends let us begin the second session of the day why is the sky blue the moon white and the grass green why is the bird flying in the sky and the fish swimming in water is this science yes science is the poetry of reality it is a journey from wondering asking testing and concluding science is a great blessing to mankind empowering the significance of science in our life our school dv chandrashekhar pur is organizing the children science conclave good morning respected principal ma'am supervisor ma'am chairman sir judges teachers and students i shrinika mishra i aratrika swai and i sudha chaina students of class 4a on behalf of team dv Welcome you all wholeheartedly to the third children science conclave with team neighbors with others. Now it's the time for our budding scientists to showcase their knowledge. So without any further delay, let's start with our first participant, Ayushman and Om Sachinanda Malik of Class Five E, going to present. on the topic common birds of india good morning my name is ayushman jyoti my name is om my name is om today we both are going to present our ppt on the topic neighbors with feathers they do you understand what neighbors with feathers yes neighbors with feathers are our birds next next do you know what are birds 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 are very special animals that have some characteristics to fly they are also known as aerial animals friends they have the ability to fly like they have hollow bones feathers they can easily fly and some flying patterns also next next do you know this bird yes i know this bird this bird's name is hope its appearance is a fawn colored bird with marking and white zebra markings on its back its habitat is throughout india china ceylon burma bangladesh etc its call is a soft musical presentation of koppo food it eats insects and grubs and some plants next a natural tree hole is the place where they live Aishman do you know what's the bird's name yes this is great indian hawk its appearance do you know that can you tell please okay its appearance is a heavy bill with yellow head and neck with black and white wings and tails as in the picture shown it has some black and white markings on its wings 
Do you know where does it live? Yes, it sleeps in the Himalayas Ghats. Yes, it sleeps in the Western Ghats and Himalayas. Food. Do you know what does it eat? No. Can you please tell me what they eat? They are mainly frugivores. Frugivores means they are mainly dependent upon fruits and vegetables. They also eat mice, lizards, and some baby birds. Call a variety of loud ruckus, crackling, and screams. Do you know what is this? This is a red jungle fawn. Its appearance is that both the female and male look same. But its main difference is that the female has the neck with black, but the male has it with a yellowish. Friends, can you identify which, which kind, kind of male? which kind of bird is it? Yes. This is a male because it has some yellowish part in its neck. Next. Do you know what is this? Many of our friends don't know this bird. Yes, this is snow parrot. My father went to Chile. My father went to Himalayas to visit there and I caught a photo from there. Its appearance is a bit 40 cm with prominent bill and necks. Narrow, barred black and white from the above. Do you know where does it live? I know. They live in snow, but I don't know the detail. Yes, the detail is that the resident is between 300 and 40,000 meters. Do you know where does this measurement come from? Yes, they are living in this area in the winters only, but in summers they go a little high. Do you know what does it take? No. Its food is lichen, mosses, and small plants. Do you know what is its call? My father has told that, but I forgot. Can you please? Yes. It's musical. It's musical chuckles in breeding seasons, shrill arms, whistles at times. This bird is very familiar with all of us. How many of you know this bird? Yes, many of you know this bird. This is the great salty woodpecker. Its appearance is like a large salty gray woodpecker with bluffy yellow chin. Here, it's it's not clearly visible, but I captured this photo from a tree hole. Do you know where does it live? No. It lives, it is found in the foothills of 100, 1000 meters to 20,000 meters, which is present in evergreen tropical forests. Do you know what does it eat? Yes. Friends, have you ever seen a small, small insect in a wood log? Yes, they eat that insect. That the insect's name is beetle larva. Their call is loud tackle in fight. Do you know this bird? This looks like a duck, but its actual name is comb duck. It is found 
mainly in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Burma, Ceylon, etc. It is a locally migratory bird. Do you know where does it? I know where it is. Friends, many of you have seen a wood log above a river. Believe in that log. Yes. Oh, it is a hollow space in a small log where they usually keep their legs and stand inside. And sometimes they stand, stand in the shallow water. Do you know what does it eat? Yes. Mainly they eat insects, fishes and frogs. They also feed on rice, vegetables, etc. Its call is a low grating cork. Thank you, Thank you. and have a nice, nice. day. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Arishman and Sachin Anand for this wonderful performance. Hello, Arishman. You have done very well. Okay. Thank you, sir. But uh, I would like to ask uh, two more uh, questions. Uh, you have presented a hornbill, greater hornbill. Have you seen? Yes, sir. Where? Sir, in Nandalkand. Okay, very good. It's Nandalkand, but it's not found in Odisha. It's found in Northeast Assam and uh, Meghalaya, uh, Arunachal Pradesh also. And uh, you said it eats what? It eats what does it eat? Food, 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 food for this bird. Sir, they mainly feed on plants and some insects. You? And lizards. Mostly, these hornbills eat nuts and fruits. And only occasionally it takes small birds also. It's a non veg and lizards. During when, when the people one gives less egg, and uh, uh, to make these chicks grow more, that time it uh, feed them, feed them with the small birds and lizards, non-veg items, because high protein, they also know where the high protein is available. So nuts and fruits is not a sufficient for this bird. So most of the people don't know, you remember it. Occasionally it takes small birds, it attacks small birds from the nest of other birds and feed the chick inside the cage. Okay. Thank okay, you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Shivangshi Sahu from 5B, who will give us a lot of information on the topic rules of birds in nature. Now, I would like to invite Shivanshi Sahu and Anandya from 5B, who will present uh, their PowerPoint presentation on the topic, Rules of Words in Nature. Mm 
Good morning, my dear teachers and my dear friends. I am Sivangshi Sahu. And I am Anindya. Today, we are here to present on the theme, Neighbors with Feathers. And our sub-theme is Role of Birds in Nature. Let's begin. Next. Birds are a miracle because they prove to us there is a finer, simpler state of being which we may strive to attain. Next. Birds pollinate plants. When we think pollinators, bees and butterflies flutter comes to our mind. But birds pollinators such as hummingbirds and honey eaters also make a big contribution, especially in high altitudes. In South Africa, for instance, nearly a quarter of salvia species are bird pollinated. And do you know, 31 species of Hawaiian bellflowers appear to have gone extinct along with the birds that pollinated them. Next. Birds are na nature's cleanup crew. The sight of vultures overhead may took foreboding, but this is both their speed of arrival and their toughness, which makes them so valuable. The scavengers of nature became a barrier to allowing deadly diseases such as rabies and tuberculosis to develop and spread. They clean up our surrounding. However, we are becoming cruel to them. Next. Birds spread seeds. When birds travel, they take the seeds they have eaten with them. They disperse them to the droppings. They bring plants back to ecosystems and that have been carried being destroyed and even carry plants across the sea to new land masses. Do you know New Zealand's forests, 70% of plants grow through dispersed by birds. Even in Mauritius, the Calvaria plant is on the verge of extinction due to the extinction of dodo. Next. Birds control pests. Birds eat insects. They are a natural way to control pests in gardens, on farms, and other places. A group of birds gliding through the area can easily eat hundreds of insects each day. Insects eating birds include wild birds, bluebirds, and woodpeckers. A recent study has shown that the birds eat 400 to 500 100 million tons of insects a year. Do you know barn swallows can consume as many as 60 insects an hour? Birds are so efficient that nest boxes have become a pest control practice throughout Europe. Next. Now I pass over to my friend Anindya. Thank you. Birds. Birds are the important members of many ecosystems. They are integral parts of food chain and food waste. In a birdland ecosystem, for example, some birds get their food mainly from plants. Others chiefly eat small, small animals such as insects or earthworms. Birds and bird eggs in turn serve as food for animals as foxes, raccoons, and snakes. The feeding relationships among all the animals in an ecosystem help prevent any one species from becoming too numerous. Next. Birds fertilize. Seabirds waste sometimes called guano was the wide goal of fertilizers for humans for millennia. Their droppings have 
high contents of nitrogen phosphate and potassium three nutrients essential for plant growth they play a key role in cycling nutrients and helping to fertilize marine ecosystems such as coral reefs next birds reduce weeds From studies it has been calculated that native sparrows in loa in usa eat the equivalent of 196000 bushels of weed seeds annually sparrows and toads all eat a wide range of seeds and will help keep weed growth minimized as they feed on natural seeds in the garden scientific importance bird study or ornithology help us advance scientifically they teach us about climatic conditions and the environment birds are also key to indicating environmental changes large rapid bird declines a lot us to an environmental problem that needs immediate attention like a tag of locust in the agricultural field thank, thank you, you and have a wonderful day ahead thank you shivanshi and anandya for Any the queries, please performance Shivam Sri, I'm yes, Anand. Yes. You have done very sir. well. Thank nice you. body language and beautiful teachings. Yes, sir. Okay. thank you, sir. But one thing I would like to tell: you have given, uh, you have uh, uh, taken example of mostly outside birds, not Indian birds. Uh -huh. You pollination for pollination, you have shown one hummingbird. Yes. Hummingbird is the American bird, not yes, Indian. Sir. But okay. same thing, we have many sun birds around you. Yes, yes sir. sir. sunbird around you you know garden also around your house you can see sunbird is taking uh, honey like this yes sir could have taken this example of our own bird yes okay, okay sir otherwise beautiful thank, thank you sir keep it up thank you sir any queries please any student want to ask in question your friends anybody have if you have question you raise hand okay Now it's time to welcome our next participant, Subhadratya Sundaray from Class Five C, to present his PowerPoint presentation on the topic bird migration. जल्दी जल्दी 
हेलो A warm good morning to one and all present over here. My name is Subhadit Sundar from Class Five C, esteemed principal, judges, and all my dear friends. My name is Subhadit Sundar from Class Five C. Now I'm going to present something on the topic neighbors with feathers, and my sub theme is migration of birds. So let's start. now first question come in our mind that what is bird migration bird migration is the regular seasonal movement of a north and south along a flyway between breeding and wintering grounds the path followed is known as the flyway quite ancient activity is practiced by birds this is the picture of bird migration it is a collective term of immigration and emigration Migra immigration occurs when new individuals are introduced it results in increase of population size immigration is when individuals leave a population it results in decrease of population size now comes why do birds migrate they migrate to find more food to disperse their own breed to different regions protect their babies to get away from predators to find warmer and colder climate now comes the patterns of bird migration the old birds that have traveled many times in their life to a particular place forms the front line because they have the experience where to go then comes the young ones traveling for the first time next are the females injured and old birds are present in the back rows Birds tend to fly in flocks rather than to fly alone. More obvious pattern is V shape. This is the picture of V shape pattern of migration. now comes the types of migration that is distance based in distance based one is long migrations and what and, and second one is short migrations so let's get deep into it long distance migration and long distance migrations of course long distance will be traveled there will be non stop journey means there will be no break journeys energy is meant by stored fat now comes the short distance migrations in short distance migrations of course short distance will be traveled journey starts from dawn and ends at dusk dawn means morning and dusk means evening that means journey starts from morning and ends at evening Birds feed during the stop means they take break journeys. Now comes the mechanics of migration. Long distance migrants store fat fifty percent of their body weight. 
Some species start journey early and stop frequently to feed and rest. In clear weather, birds fly at an altitude of 1,000 meters. It helps them to prevent strike with any obstacle. Obstacle, we can also say an object. Many birds have set specific migration routes. Now comes the advantages of bird migration. Migration provides birds with new environment that provides them with greater supply of food, shelter and territory, better suited environment, avoidance from their predators. Now comes the disadvantages of bird migration. Many young birds are not able to reach the destination as they die during the course of their journey as their body can't permit that long distance journey. Sometimes man-made high buildings and lighthouses cause the death of many migratory birds. Means they get hit by that man-made high buildings and lighthouses and they die. Sudden climatic changes like storm, hurricanes, storm winds, strong current of wind, fog are the causes for the death of a sizable number of migrants. Conclusion. Birds migrate to survive. Migration plays an important role in their evolution. Several climatic factors triggers the process of migration. Not all the birds migrate, but some of the individuals of a population migrates, like Siberian crane, painted stock, flamingo, pelican, etc. So here I end my PPT presentation. Thank you, everybody, and a wonderful day ahead. Any quarries? Thank you very much. Uh, well, can you say, hello? Uh, yes, can sir. you say which part? Cross longest distance non stop. No. No, sir. Bar tailed Gaduit. Bar tailed Gaduit also comes to Mangla Jodi sometimes. Okay. Yes, they sir. Uh, cover the distance of 7,500 miles non stop without food and without rest. Sir, 7,500 7, miles. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Subhaditya, for your beautiful performance. Next, I would like to invite Arya Abhiraj and Arman of Class 4G to present the presentation on bird sanctuaries. Sorry. 
Good morning. I am Arya Abhiraj Swai from Standard 4D, roll number 6. And good morning. My name is Arvagna Patra, class 4, section D. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most famous bird sanctuaries in Odisha called Chilika, mainly focusing on Nalabana bird sanctuary. Nalabana is located in the Ganjam district of Odisha in Chilika Lake. It is a very popular place for bird watching as this is where lots and lots of birds migrate. Why is this place so suitable for birds, Arya? Good question. The main reason is climate. The climate of Nalabana remains tropical warm and is very pleasant throughout the year. With October to March having a temperature of 6 degrees Celsius and summer season having a temperature of 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. However, one must look out for the period between July and October as this is when heavy rainfall occurs. In this graph, as we see in 2021 and 2022, there is a drastic decrease in the bird and species count, mainly of water birds, because water birds love muddy areas. And because of high water level, there are not enough mud flats left to support large amounts of water birds. White-billed sea eagle, gray lag goose, purple moor hen, heron, flamingo, jacana, northern pintail. All of these birds come from men. All of these birds come from all over the world, like Northern Eurasia, Caspian region, Siberia, and Kazakhstan. This sanctuary also serves a home to aquatic wildlife like prawn, crabs, crustaceans, limbless lizards, and most famous Irrawaddy dolphins. Not only does it provide a home to marine wildlife, but also it provides a home to many types of aquatic and subaquatic plants. 726, of, 726 species of flowering plants belonging to 496 genera and 120 families of plants grow here, including seagrass, mangrove species, and many more types of wild plants. So you might be asking, what is the importance of a bird sanctuary? Bird sanctuaries not only conserve birds, but also wildlife and vegetation, meaning they protect the plants and animals to, man to maintain ecological balance. It means to maintain the food chains and food webs all over the world to help balance the climate and environment. It means uh, we already know that plant uh, bird sanctuaries not only conserve birds, but also wildlife and vegetation. All types of plants gives us oxygen, which helps to maintain the climate and environment for cultural, local and national benefits such as tourism. Chil all around the world, Chilika visit, many people visit Chilika. These people spend lots of money on hotel booking, boat rides, and meals. Through this, our government gets lots of money through tourism. This is all for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abhiraj and Arman. Arya? Yes. Have you been to Nalaban? What? 
Nalban, 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 Nalabana. Have you been there? I have gone to uh, Chilika. Oh, you went to Chilika, but not seen the Nalban. Yes. Klebigo, you have not seen. Not very much, but I've seen well, some parts of Nalabana. Okay. Very good. Very nice presentation. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Sir, do you have any queries? Yes, yes. Your friends have some queries. They will ask. Anybody want to ask question? Yes. Yes. So my question is, what is a flora? Flora means uh, many types of plants. Anybody have? Yes. Quickly come here. I wanted to ask that, can you give some more examples of bird sanctuaries? Some more examples of bird sanctuaries. Yes. Sir, Sir do you want to answer this question? Yes. 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 We have only one bird sanctuary that is Nalban in Odisha. And we have other bird area. Bird area that is of, what is that? That is different than the sanctuary. But sanctuary, there is certain rules, regulation, and visit, restriction of visit of the people that is sanctuary. That is Nalban. But all other bird, important bird area, IBF, we tell them I B A. An important birds area. That is Bitarkanika, one place, and Debrigard, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, Hirakud Dam, that is second place. And we have important bird area, uh, Satpoda, and uh, Civil Palace. Okay? Yes, sir. Last question. Can you give some more examples of birds found in Nalabana Island? Mostly, no. Can you? Can you? No. Mostly, Nalabana is an area where flamingos, the biggest bird, the longest bird, they migrate. And secondly, one grey lag goose, that is a high flying duck, goose. And uh, bar headed goods and all type of flying dogs are there in the Nalban. Okay. Now I would like to invite Devansh of Virupanda from 4E, who is going to present his PowerPoint presentation on the topic Ornithologist. You can yeah. keep this. Ah. Good morning, all. I am Devan Chagro Panda from Standard 4E. 
Birds are the most amazing creatures amongst all living beings. They are fascinating. Watching birds bring pleasure to our eyes and soul. So, when this hobby becomes an obsession, an ornithologist is created. Today, I would like you to meet Dr. Uday Narayan Dev, the bird man of Odisha. Dr. Uday was a royal of Sanake Mundi and a noted politician and elected to assembly for three times. He was an arts graduate, but his obsession for avian behavior made him read zoology and ornithology. He spent years in the jungle for more knowledge and understanding of birds. His eventual progression and his and his uh, knowledge for knowing birds made him kept his meaning kept him with his hobby. But he became completely engrossed in it in 1984 after his electoral defeat. Raja Sahib was a self-made ornithologist. His passion for birding stemmed his dedication and eventually led him to the birdman Odi of Odisha. Dr. Udayanarayan Dev was an avi avian lover from his childhood. Dr. Dev inherited an interest in birds from his father, late Nanda Kishor Anangabhima Dev Keshari Gajapati Maharaj, who was also a falconer and nurtured and owned a zoo where he nurtured many kinds of wild animals and birds. Raja, but it was Raja Dharma Kumar Singhji of Bhavnagar, an avid falconer who suggested him to go through the Vedas, Samhitas, Puranas, and all kinds of ancient literature on birds. Since there were books already written on birds in this Indian subcontinent by Dr. E. C. Stalwart Baker and Dr. Salim Ali. Bird watching is a recent phenomenon. There is even a wealth of data about even the most common birds in this country. Communicating about birds was not exactly very easy 50 years ago. There were far fewer bird watchers then and far fewer opportunities to spread the word about the fascinating world of birds. He did not have a professional degree in ornithology. He kept on preparing himself to pursue a dream of understanding birds. Nature has been my teacher and forest my classroom, says the conservationist. He was the only one who took initiatives to study the birds of Odisha nearly after 130 years. His first bird survey started from the jungles of Ganjam, Gajapati, Bodh, and Dadan, Pulbani in 1975. As you can see in this photograph, this is Dr. Dave's team. Dr. Dave, first of all, didn't receive any support from the government. So, he was loved a lot by subjects. Some of his subjects joined him and made a team so that he can get support and go on with his journey. There is the last proper study of birds of Odisha was conducted by Cole Samuel Tikel in the 1840s. A proper study of birds of Odisha had not been made before Dr. Dave launched the Operation Bihanga in 1977. The research Dr. Dave started on the migration pattern of the birds whose chilka has strengthened the ground for conservation of birds. This attracted more and more bird lovers of Odisha to join this project. Awareness campaigns were made to make people about, aware about the beauty and importance of birds. 
the slaughtering of birds stopped significantly now the people are more aware he became the first man in odisha to conduct systematic bird surveys he built a bird museum to train youths in ornithology as a part of his project bihanga in chilka dr dev was an ardent reader of many books both in odia ardent reader of many books both in odia and english his books are basically about birds hunting stories and his experiences in dense forests but all of them are not known here are some of his much valued books a field guide to the birds of chilka basics of bird watching field guide to the birds of odisha chilka and avian wonderland pocket dictionary of birds as you can see here are some of his cover book cover pages which are old and out of print and scarce and are very hard to find dr dev dived deep into the ancient scriptures to find and establish the existence of species thousands of years ago and documented them in the present context this book vihanga samhita a result of 45 years of intensive research as a part of the project that he called orientalization of oriental ornithology yuen dev was the father of ornithology in odisha and this book was is possibly the one of the genre in this country this this most intensive work on birds vihanga samhita a book of six volumes about more than 2085 birds was released by government ganeshi lal on january 2021 this includes sanskrit taxonomy of birds in the subcontinent name of all birds in indian languages and explores 127 color plates on birds every bird has a fascinating story of thousands of years the vihanga samhita is the career of those chronicles in their martial science has followed the battle formation tact of flamingo birds for in for formation of bat infantry in the battlefield birds are not just creatures but they too are a part of the culture we have learned a lot from them this is evident from aruna kriyonchu vyuha in mahabharat he has fall also followed scriptures like vajas sahita dealing with all kinds of falcons and eagles that dr dev followed he has received many honors he was conferred with biju patnaik award for wildlife conservation for his contribution to avian research and conservation as well as for popularization and doctor of science degree by ouat he has also been inducted by the hall of fame by the bhubaneswar bird walk in december 2014 so here dr dev is spending a moment with his pet crow in the picture i addressed dr dev as an unsung hero because the honors that he received was very little for others almost nobody in odisha knows him it is a shame on me that i didn't know him before i made this slide Be although i was an odia the acknowledgement and honors he received were very little i demand a bird should be named in dr dev's honor i demand we should get to read his creations so i would like to end my ppt presentation here not before giving a special thanks to dr ananta ramkar honorary wild life warden gajapati district who was also the family historian of dr uday dev he helped 
may make this slide and complete it. Thank you and have a nice day ahead. Any queries? Evans. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Which books you so many books he has written? Okay. Can you remember? Can you tell me which books he has written? Yes, he has written a lots of books like Chilka and Avian Wonderland and uh, A Field Guide to the Birds of Odisha, Pocket Dictionary of Birds, and many more. These are, uh, those were some of his much valued books, but are out of print and scarce. Very good. But after his death, the Pihang Sangeeta was published. He, yes, those, that is popular, but uh, those are not available. Oh, thank you. Buddy. Thank you. What, what is zoology? Zoology means uh, studying of animals. I, I also wanted to ask that what is avian behavior? It's avian behavior means the study of the birds. Avian means birds. Avian behavior means related to birds. I wanted to ask one thing. Can you give more examples about the awards of Dr. Dev? Excuse me. You highlight the awards of Dr. Dev. Yes, Dr. Dev got, got a lots of honors like Biju Patnaik Award for Wildlife Conservation and as well as popularization by and he was inducted in the Hall of Fame by Bhugneshwar Boardwalk in 2014. Thank you, Devansh, for a wonderful performance. Now, I would like to welcome Sachika Bhanti and Shashi of Class 4G to present their PPT on Birds and Bees. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Warm greetings to everyone on the occasion of Third Children's Science Conclave 2022. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sachika Mahanti from Class 4, Section D. And I'm Shriya Shiswani of Class 4, Section D. Today, we are going to present our PowerPoint presentation on the topic, Beaks of Birds. Let them So who are birds? Birds are the colorful and beautiful animals who fly high in the sky. They are the creatures with feathers and wings. Birds have certain unique display features such as bodies covered with feathers, various types of beaks, an extremely light body with hollow bones which helps them to keep their body weight low so that they can aid in flight. 
Now let us discuss about the various types of beaks. One of the most unique features of all the birds is their typical beak. Different birds have different types of beaks, which vary in their sizes and shapes, colors, textures, and the type of food they eat. Birds use their beaks for purposes like killing, cleaning, fighting, protecting, mating, courtship, and for feeding young hatchlings. Next slide is about the various parts of a beak. So what is a beak? The beak is a projection that protrudes from the mouth of all the birds and has two main parts, the lower mandible and the upper maxilla. They can be shaped long or short, narrow or wide, curved or straight and are sharp. This is the picture which clearly explains us about the various parts of a beak. Next slide is about wear and tear of a beak. So what is the meaning of wear and tear? The meaning of wear and tear of a beak means the loss or injury of a beak. A beak is prone to wear and tear with its regular use. But this wear and tear are protected by an epidermal layer of keratin called the ramphotheca. This layer protects the beak from breaking due to external forces and gives it strength to chew, bite, play, hunt, etc. But an amazing fact about Ramphotheca is Ramphotheca can grow at a rate of one quarter to one half inch per month. Isn't it interesting? I hope I was clear to all of you. What is the difference between a beak and a bill? All of you must have heard about the beaks and the bills. But you are often confused. What is the difference between them? The beaks are pointed and rounded at the end. The beaks are found in those birds who mainly feed on meat, like the birds of prey and striking or pecking birds. Whereas the bills are flat and rounded on the end. They are found in the birds who feed on water creatures. So now let's talk about the types of beaks birds have. The different birds have different types of beaks. So the shape of the type, so the shape of the bird's beak is according to its food habit. Now let's briefly talk about the seven types of beaks birds have. First comes the crushing beak. Birds like the sparrows, pigeons, cardinals, etc., have a crushing beak which is short and hard. Such type of beak helps them to crush the seeds and grains and make them soft before eating. Next comes the curved beak. Birds like the parrots and macaws have a curved beak. This type of beak helps them to crack the nuts and fruits. Next comes the piercing and tearing beak. Birds like the eagle and vulture eat flesh. Such type of birds have a strong, hard and a curved beak. Curved beak it is not as curved as a parrot, rather a bit curved in the front part. And this type of beak helps these birds to pierce and tear the flesh. Next comes the chiseling beak. Birds like the woodpecker have a chiseling beak which is strong, hard, long, straight, straight and a chisel shaped beak. This type of beak helps this woodpecker to peck at the wood and eat the insects present in the wood. The woodpecker also uses it as a chisel to, to, to make a hole in the tree trunk which serves it as a nest. Next comes the probing beak. Birds like the hummingbird, sunbird, hoopay, and hoopay have a long and slender beak. This type of beak helps the sunbird and the hummingbird to suck the nectar from flowers. And this type of beak also helps the hoopay to take out the insects and worms present in the ground. Next comes the sifting beak. The duck has a flat and a broad beak which has two small, sun, which has two small holes on both the sides. 
Now this duck digs up the food from the mud and water along with it from the base of the pond, pond or lake where it lives. Mud and water, now the duck cannot eat these particles. So its beak pushes out this mud and water through the holes as well as the edges of the beak, leaving the food behind. Its beak thus helps to sift the food from mud and water. Now comes the last type of beak we will talk about and it's the sticky beak. The cute bird, which is the swallow, has a small, broad and a sticky beak, which is sticky from inside. This helps the swallow to catch the flies while flying. Now this made the swallow very easy to catch, catch the flies. So what this, swallow, what, is, what this intelligent swallow does, it opens its mouth wide and flies and the flies that, and the insects or the flies that fly around it get stuck to its mouth and the swallow eats them up. Now let's see the pictures of the types of beaks these birds have. <laughs> These pictures show us the clear pictures that the types of beaks these birds have. For example, the flesh-eating birds like the eagles, vultures, and hawks have that type of beak that is a bit curved in the front part. And the seed-eater birds like the finches, um, like the finches, hum, like the sparrows, pigeons, etc., have that type of beak shown in the second picture. Fruit and nut eaters like the parrots have that type of beak which is curved. Now the nectar feeder birds like the hummingbird, sunbird and summing, uh, sunbird have, that type, uh, have a long and slender beak that is shown over there. Now an amazing fact about the hummingbird is that some types of hummingbirds can change their neck color part. For example, I don't know the exact directions uh, to which they are facing and they can change their colors. But let's, uh, but still, take, let's take an example. For example, if the hummingbird is facing to this um, direction, then um, let's take an example that its neck color part would be dark green. And if it turns into that position, then it will turn into rubby red. And to that position, then it will change to another color. So this is how its neck part changes, the colors changes. Now, fish eater birds have this type of beak. Now let us discuss about some amazing facts on beaks of birds. The beak is a bird's nose and mouth. As you all know, there are no teeth in a bird's beak. But which birds have teeth? The last known bird species to have teeth were the Ichthyronis, who were found around 66 million years ago. This is the picture of an Ichthyronis. Second, which bird has the sharpest beak in the world? The great blue heron is reported to have one of the sharpest beaks in the whole world. An average puffin can hold 10 fishes in its mouth. Third, the Australian pelican has officially the longest beak in the world, which measures around 37 centimeters to 47 centimeters, which is over a foot. The sword built hummingbird's beak is longer than its body, as you all can see in this picture. To conclude, we would like to end our presentation with a very meaningful quote. And the quote is, intelligence without ambition is like a bird without wings. Thank you all and have a cheerful and a wonderful day ahead. Sanchika and Sriyansh. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. You spoke very well. Thank you, sir. And one more you, bill you have missed, I will tell you. Have you heard of the birds? Indian skimmer? No. No, sir. No. You will find in Mahana, the entire Mahana area, you will find one bird that is called Indian skimmer. They skim and take aquatic creatures like fishes and all eating. So they skim because beaks, generally most of the beaks are parallel to the ground. They can pick up the food from the ground or water, whatever. But in Indian skimmer, upper mandible of the beak is shorter than the lower one. That means it look like this. So it cannot pick up. So it has to skim. 
that is why judges skip bar okay indians okay, skip bar thank you sir mr right. sachika i have one question yes sir uh, crow they have beaker bill crow yeah sir uh, they have bill so what is the definition of a beak and bill you have tell repeat again repeat sir beaks are uh, pointed and uh, rounded at the end they are found in the birds which uh, feed on meat whereas the bills are flat and rounded on the end they are found on the birds which feed on water creatures okay then crow you classify so crow has a beak beak okay thank you any queries no sir thank you for this informative presentation really we have learned a lot next i would like to invite rishik das of class 5f to present his presentation on flying patterns यूज़ कर good good afternoon everyone present here my name is rishik das from class 5 section f standing before you to speak about my theme neighbors with feathers my sub theme is flying patterns introduction there are many ways of flying of birds albatrosses glide and so with the long narrow wings stretched out staying aloft for hours without a single wing beat on the other hand hummingbirds can't stretch their wings for even a second in flight birds like woodpeckers have a swooping flight and crows fly in a straight line how birds fly birds fly by flapping their their wings steering mainly with their tails compared to the parts of an aeroplane a bird's wings acts as both wings and propeller a bird's wings has many adjustable features it can be shortened or lengthened by flexion the feathers of the tip can be spread or closed the angle of the whole wing or its part on one side or both can be altered what are flying patterns many birds flock together the flock is called a murmuration as they fly the birds in a murmuration seem to be connected together for years scientists have wondered about murmurations recently they have started to use cameras and computers to solve the mystery of murmurations what scientists still don't understand though is how bird hundreds and thousands of birds seem to know when they have to turn and when birds at opposite ends are separated by the space types of flying patterns there are 10 types of flying patterns they are first direct flight many species including ducks herons shorebirds and blackbirds fly in a straight and level path while continuously flapping their wings second flap and glide ravens owls and hawks commonly take a break from flapping their wings by soaring and gliding third glide 
swifts and swallows glide in order to travel a distance without flapping their wings four hawking this technique refers to flying out and up from a perch then back again in a circular motion this is used by fly catchers and warblers to hunt for insects on the wing fifth hovering the bird appears as if hovering in place hummingbirds can do this at will because of a unique flexible shoulder joint that enables the bird to create lift during the up and down stroke sixth static soaring hawks and vultures fly in circles and soar on their long broad wings seven straight line formation pelicans flamingos cormorants and some other cranes fly in a straight line while low over the water eight undulating flight this describes a kind of flight of which is a, like a roller coaster style where the bird flaps its wings during the rising phase then glides as it descends into the valley of waves v formation this is probably the most recognizable pattern used by migratory birds such as geese ducks and swans the flock is arranged in a v pattern each bird slightly higher than the other to take advantage of the lift then zigzag snips and falcons fly up and down in a somewhat triangular path as you can see the example why do birds fly in a pattern many types of birds gather in flocks but not many fly in flocks instead they fly in formation canada geese geese are the most well known birds for flying in formation for this migratory birds fly in groups or formation is a way to conserve energy many birds assemble in large groups murmurations it's usually because a predator is nearby the birds in the murmuration move as one unit because each bird is influenced by the movement of all the other around it to conclude flying is a mode of locomotion used by birds that helps them to migrate feed and avoid predators with this i sign off thank you thank you rishik for your beautiful performance any queries rishik yes sir you have done well thank you sir one pattern of uh, uh, flying you have not shown that the small starling rosy starling yes have you seen that starling boni boni chade i bolia dekhiya pai yes sir rosy starling they migrate winter migrate yes sir they fly in a different pattern they changes their pattern big way to give the impression to the predator that they are bigger than the predator yes sir okay thank That's you sir it. thank you Okay. Now I would like to invite Pranit Narayan and Samiksha Nanda from Class Four A to present their PowerPoint presentation on the topic nesting habits. हेलो हेलो
Good morning, everyone. We are present over here. Respected Principal Madam, Supervisor Madam, we have special guests, teachers, and my dear friends. I'm Pranit Narayan. I'm Samak Sharanda from Class 4, Section 8, JB Public School, Chandrasekha, Perform Nation 21. Pranit, have you ever heard birds making sounds, sitting with their nets with twigs falling out? Yes, Samak sure. That is because birds are among the few other animals that build their own homes in the form of nets. Different birds build different nests. So now we are going to present our PPT on the topic nesting habits. A bird nest. Now what is a bird nest? A bird nest is a spot in which a bird lays and incubates its eggs and raises its young. Different species of birds build different nests. Some are very simple construction and some are complex. Why do birds build nests? Birds build nests to lay their eggs and to keep them safe, to incubate their eggs, to raise their chicks, for protection from predators, for protection from weather. Now, where do birds build nests? Birds usually build nests in hedges, bushes and trees, on the ground, in the holes or in trees, in reed by rivers and lakes, on cliff edge, on and in buildings, on ledge and walls, under the eaves of the roofs and in nesting boxes. Mad tools used to build nets are sticks and twigs, grasses and reeds, leaves, mosses and reeds, my feather, but saliva, seed head from grass and reeds, silk from spider, also from sea weeds. Fur and hair from other animals, mad made materials, materials used because to hold it together for in solution, for quick nest incubation, and for combat. Now, let us discuss about the types of birds' nests. Our first type of birds' nest is ground nests. Birds need a tiny hole in the ground or in leaf litter to lay their eggs. For example, ducks. Pheasants, penguins, waterfalls, wading birds, etc. build these types of nests. As you can see, an example has been given here. Borrow nest. It is also called internal nest. It protection from the predators and elements. Consists temperature for eggs as well as hatchlings. Boring owls, banging swallows, kingfishers, and puppets all make their nests in burrows. Cavity nests. Cavities in trees provide great protection from predators and their enemies. These holes allow birds to properly heat their eggs while also providing shelter from bad weather like stormy uh, weather and uh, heavy rainfall uh, and cyclones, etc. For example, woodpeckers, bluebirds, parrots, etc. build these types of nests in the box of trees. Platform nests. These nests are high and flat. Built by the birds live in trees or on the tops of giant vegetation. These nets are utilized by huge birds or prey such as eagles, ospreys, herons, and cormorants. Hub nests. Hub nests are the most common and typical of a nest. These nests resemble a bowl or cup, majorly made up of sticks and twigs, twine and feathers. For example, songbirds, hummingbirds, robins, sparrow, etc., build these types of uh, nests to build their, uh, to build, uh, to lay the eggs. You can see an example has been given, and uh, the hummingbird has given its eggs. Suspended nests. It resembles cup nest, but differ in how they get support. The sides support them, not their buttons. It is a variety of rams and sizes, such as in pendant, spear, or hanging cup. Example, orioles, weaver, and bureaus. Now, let us discuss about the interesting facts of bird's nest. Ever wonder why there are so many pigeons around us? Because they can <laughs> nest up to eight times a year. Very interesting. Here they are fully feathered when they hatch. As soon as they dry, sometimes in as little as five minutes, they will leave the nest. Oh, very quick Lulu, to leave a nest. Most young don't stay in the nest, but it's a different story with larger birds. 
like owls, hawks, and eagles. Bald eagles, which is the national bird of USA, will stay in the nest up to 98 days. A nest is not a home. It's used merely to hold the eggs and protect the young. Many creatures, including wolves and mice and alligators, build nests. But nothing can compare a bird's nest in complexity of design. Quail and ducks use their own down feathers to line their nests, but others collect feathers dropped by the larger birds. Thank, Thank you. you. So, friends, promise me, will you protect the birds? Say loudly, will you protect the birds? So, let's protect the birds and spread our nests around the world. Thank you. Pranit. Yes. And Samikya. Yes, sir. Can you tell which bird doesn't make nest? Uh, example are the lazy birds, the cuckoos. The cuckoos. Yes. And, and the coils. Asian coin. They are called brood parasites. Okay. They lay egg in others' nest. Yes. One. Second, when they make nest, all the all the birds generally make nest before laying egg. Yes. So the old nest they don't use. You know that. Yes, sir. They don't use old nest, but there are birds they don't make nest every year, once till they leave. Can you tell that? Uh, no, sir. Eagle, white-bellied eagle. And almost all predator birds, they make nest once till they die. Okay. Sir. Okay. And you know how the suspended nests are made? Uh, yes, sir. Weaver bird? Yes, sir. Oh, no. How? Sir, it is uh, made of it uh, first uh, we, we some in the form of a circle. Uh, it is done repeatedly for a few weeks. Then it, the structure is completed with a hole in it. But very interesting thing is only the male weaver bird, they make up to half of the nest, half yes. helmet size. Then it wait for its partner to come. The female bird come and inspect. If it likes this nest, they become partner and both of them complete the bird, complete the Net, big one. Yes, Otherwise, suppose that female doesn't like the male partner, then they leave. So that particular nest cannot be completed. Yes. Sir. And sometimes you'll find the half-made nest left in the tree. That means the male partner did not have a partner. That's why the nest left like that. Okay. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pranit and Samiksha, for your wonderful performance. Now, I welcome Brinda Satpati and Anvesha Swain of 5F to present the PPT on Role of Birds in Nature. Center. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Third Children's Science Conclave 2022. A warm welcome to all the judges, my dear teachers, and my friends. 
I am Vish Aswani and I am Brenda Marve Satpati of class 5 section F going to present our topic the role of birds in nature before you so let's start birds are important members of many ecosystem they play a vital role in controlling pests acting as pollinators and maintaining island ecology in addition birds are important to humans in many ways such as serving as a source of food and providing fertilizer in agricultural settings birds have ecological values as important elements of natural systems if there are no birds the whole ecosystem will be disturbed so now let's see how birds play a vital role in maintaining the ecological balance of nature birds eat insects they are a natural way to control pests in gardens on farms and other places a group of birds gliding through the air can easily eat a hundreds of insects each day insect eating birds include warblers bluebirds woodpeckers etc second point many fruit eating birds help in dispersal of seed after eating fruit they carry the seeds in the intestines and deposit them in new places fruit eating birds include mockingbirds orioles finches and robins birds are often important to island ecology in new zealand the kereru and kokako are important browsers or animals that eat or nibble on leaves tender young shoots or other vegetation sea birds add nutrients to soil and to water with their production of guano their dung some birds are called nature's clean up crew birds like vulture crows etc as scavengers and due to their sharp eyesight they can see any dead organism much before than other scavengers like rats and dogs this helps in decrease of spread of diseases like rabies many birds also eat small insects and worms and keep the pest population in control hummingbirds and other flower visiting birds provide an important service to plants and trees when they visit their flowers to drink nectar they are attracted to bright colors and shapes and plants have adapted to provide sturdy perches for pollinating birds the birds dive deep within the flower to get the sweet nectar and this is when pollen attaches to their body then they spread the pollen to other flowers they visit allowing plants to reproduce Birding brings joy to millions of people around the world. This is the hobby of observing and identifying birds in their natural habitat. This is not only uh, this not only encourages people to get outdoors and enjoy nature, but also boosts the economy as money is spent on tools and travel. there are benefits to birds for everyone not just birders a hospital in liverpool uk plays soothing bird songs in the halls of children's world to calm anxious patient birds can bring happiness through the sound and sight while connecting people to the nature hence we saw that birds are the important parts of nature they play a vital role in nature in many more ways so we need to save them from being extinct 
birds provide so much to us and this world we live in and it is our obligation to protect them as humans without birds there will be an ecological imbalance we as humans don't have the right to destroy nature and it is also in our best interest to protect mother nature and her children so we should uh, we should save the all birds from being extinct or endangered thank you thank you sir thank you for this graceful performance it was really enjoyable हेलो थैंक यू सो मच डियर चिल्ड्रन नाउ आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट अ डिस्टिंग्विश गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर श्री प्रमोद धड़ा सर to provide his valuable feedback to our students sir please hello all the chill hello i never expected that presentation will be so beautiful the small children can make so beautiful presentation about birds and their knowledge and study was very clarity in thoughts and they covered everything on birds and uh, i was surprised i was talking to the teachers there how could they know all these things about the birds when i recently i just was was just telling about you i went to one college and asked people about the students mature students how many birds they know maximum intelligent student they could say that they know about to uh, only 20 19 20 birds but you people know many things and the way you present it you give your presentation that is very eye catching like a very mature man i cannot i cannot give such presentation before the audience like you all thank you very much thank you best wishes one thing i will just request the teachers here and the students also always you are using the birds which are not indians i request we have plenty of birds we are more more than 1200 species in india and odisha we have 500 around 500 species of birds you are using the word humming birds humming birds why humming birds humming birds is not indian birds i request the teachers and student to concentrate on the that because the, uh, the uh, what is that the act, the uh, the action the humming bird is doing we have sun birds we have seven kind of sun birds around you we, we us uh, the bottle bottle brush you just observe the bottle brush uh, flower in the morning you will find many sun birds are there they are doing the same thing same week but of anybody is very small and they fly while they taking the honey from the flower but it is a slight bigger than that and one more students children just hear me one you have uh, shown all the nest i like the, the nesting pattern and even i asked the which is the brood parasite you said also that the very uh, many of us do not know who the uh, which bird 
uh, do not make their own nest. You said that. But one thing, you know, tailor birds. Have you seen anybody? Tailor bird. How big? This one? This one? <laughs> tailor bird is a very small bird, like this. Tailor bird. In Odia, we have named in my book Darji Chade, Darji Chade. They what they do, they fold, fold a leaf, single leaf. Since bird is very small. They fold a leaf and stitch it with the wave, wave, Budiani Jalo. Budiana Jalo Negi Tontare, set out Sile Kore, Ebb the Kordava, Edit Swadava. That is why it is called the Taylor Bad, the Richard. That nest you have not shown, uh, and it's for your knowledge. That's all. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. And uh, I'm very happy being a part of this. Uh, uh, celebration and uh, uh, function. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really thankful to the wonderful bunch of students who have tuned up in such great numbers. I am also thankful to Sri Pramod Dara sir for his cordial cooperation and for helping us make the session a fulfilling one. Now, I deem it an honor to invite Madam Swetha Sri Purohit, who happens to be a PhD scholar on birds, also associated with Central University Koraput, Odisha, a proud alumni of DAV Chandrasekharpur. We welcome you, ma'am. Please put your hands together for ma'am Swetha Sri, who is ready to share her views. Ma'am, please. A very warm afternoon to everyone. It is a uh, real uh, in the school. It really takes me back to school days, even though we did not have science conclaves like this back then. But uh, we had really good uh, uh, times. Uh, we had good interactions, whatever could be possible at that phase of time. But now since technology has advanced, we are having a really good uh, time. I hope I'm audible. Is there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're audible. It's all clear. Okay. 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 So, unfortunately, I could not join you all physically there. It would be, uh, it would have been a great experience to be a part of the event there in the school. It would be really a homecoming for me. I hope in future I get another opportunity where I would be interacting with you physically and uh, it is really great to see this crowd uh, even though uniforms have changed but the facial, uh, faces have the same value that uh, I feel we had at our time and uh, all my respected teachers this is very encouraging opportunity for me and I have been following the program since morning it was so enlightening by Nikun sir who gave a talk on the planets and life on planets then subsequently uh, Mr. Pramod Dhar sir and uh, Professor J.K. Panigrai sir who gave talks on uh, different uh, aspects of science uh, and I even uh, Pramod Dhar sir informed a lot about birds he is an expert on birds of Odisha which is enthralling pictorial encyclopedia and it is really uh, I feel that uh, presenting before you all and uh, all the students it would be a great opportunity okay I'm just trying to connect uh, if I uh, to see if the presentation can stream in because uh, there's some technical glitch I see let me try again
in the meanwhile i would just like to say that uh, the uh, talk by the students is really enlightening i feel that i don't have much information to give you because you have already known a lot about uh, words from the presentation by students and really students those who are presented hats off to you all for collating such information and bringing it and presenting it so beautifully it was such a like uh, a presentation at your age in such a big uh, aura thank you ma'am could you please switch on your video just a minute actually i'm trying to open the uh, like uh, presentation i think that is the technical glitch glitch uh, there please give me a minute Ma'am, just a minute. I'm just sharing the presentation. Ma'am, uh, due to some technical glitch, your voice is not audible to us, ma'am. Now is it audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just a minute. Let me see where the presentation is. I hope the presentation is visible now. Yes, ma'am, it's visible. And the video is also fine. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. Let's continue. Yes, ma'am. So uh, we have been assigned this topic, the flying jewels of nature, uh, that uh, is uh, about the avian species, that uh, about whose behavior, ecology, patterns. study everything has been well discussed by the students and uh, i just want to go with uh, a simple note that uh, when we talk of birds we see them as a very beautiful creature around us they are very colorful so and they are also equally precious so the term jewel would definitely match up with them when we say that uh, these birds are important to us and it also valuable as well as they are, they are a treat to watch with this note i would start my talk in which i would just start with the first statement a very popular statement from a zoology book i should say uh, the quality we define as life is perhaps more fully represented in birds than in any other vertebrates or indeed in any animals or whatsoever this was 
uh, a quote from the life of vertebrates by john zachary young which who which is a very famous book for the students of zoology and when we talk of birds uh, they have been a very important component of the nature and also from the point of view of evolution these birds have been uh, equally important because they have been adapted to a lot of uh, habitat a lot of features which we will be covering gradually so when we talk of birds we just say that they are feathered bipeds mostly adapted for flying so here a term biped should be a bit confusing biped the term it comes from two terms that is bi that means two and ped means legs so they are also having two legs because we all know that every uh, uh, that uh, that we are all having four limbs one two three four two hands and two legs but but, uh, but in our case we are walking with two legs so we are also biped and the birds are also biped because they also walk with two legs because other two limbs are modified for flying we in our case we use as our hands right and then uh, this you can see in this picture uh, like a wide variety of birds can be seen in in the most of them are the flying birds in but extreme right corner you can see the small uh, um, there is a bird this is a large bird picture is quite small that is the emu which is an australian non flying bird so so birds have one feature that is unique to them that is the feather but all the birds may not fly because of feathers feathers are equally important for them and one of the important function of the feather is also to keep the bird body warm because birds are also warm blooded organisms that means the organism whose body temperature is constant we are also warm blooded blooded because we also have a constant body temperature because when you must have all have been suffering from fever what happens then your body temperature increases it uh, increases from uh, 98.6 to around 100 102 then you get worried so because our body is designed to stay in a constant temperature that is why we are also called warm blooded likewise the birds are also called warm blooded organisms because they also have a constant body temperature and this feather helps in maintaining this constant body temperature and we know that they have a very advanced body design also along with the feathers they have this edge of escaping into any kind of habitat when they are in trouble some students uh, informed about migration why the birds migrate so they have this advantage of flying that is the reason they can reach any kind of habitat from the polar ice caps to the tropical forests to the desert to the coast you can find birds in different kinds of habitats all the any habitat you pick you can see birds in your balcony you can see birds deep in the forest when you go to a desert there also you may see a bird when you go to the snowy mountains there also some birds can be seen when you go to the coastal region you can see some sea birds as well as shore birds this is how you find the birds in different kinds of habitats now can you all just hear the sounds if uh, i don't know if it will be audible to you i'll try to get the sound if possible okay i think it will not be audible here no ma'am no no it's not just, audible just a minute i'll try to do it on the system so that uh, it may be audible there okay ma'am
actually i had made this uh, a bit interactive i don't know if students can interact over this that would be really yes, great yes ma'am yes, listen ma it's very interesting you will listen the bird sound and tell which word it is yes is it audible yes ma'am it's audible ma'am uh, now we can go for the interactive session so uh, actually the presentation to... along with the presentation we can go for the interactive session as well i'll just due uh... to the paucity of time uh, you can uh, we can direct okay i'll be a bit faster let uh, let me just uh, go quickly with the interactive session then sure ma'am sure ma'am so the first question who wants to ask the first question sir please give it the mic Uh, ma'am, actually, I just want to say, say some more parts about uh, watching birds. After that, can we have it? Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm just starting with some photo. Uh, some for uh, I'm skipping a few slides. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. The slide is visible now. Ma'am, is the slide visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. So we just, I just want to sum up with things that oh, why we are curious about birds. You all, and uh, we have been exploring a lot about birds, but the main question comes like with this: the diversity in their eating has. it is important that the birds uh, need to be identified now right uh, you see there is a plumage variation in birds with uh, different kinds of feathers or uh, like uh, the uh, various kinds of uh, beaks they have with this diversity we start identifying birds so i these are the parts of a bird from which we can identify them so we need to have some close looks to the birds or in different parts basically the crown uh, the eye line the mouth ridge the breast region the crest is present then the lower region the tail the rump the wing bar the flanks then the primaries and secondaries the feathers the feathers of the under wing so these are the parts of a bird from which we can identify them and bird watching or twitching or birding is observing birds in their natural habitat a hobby to which millions of people young and old old have been hooked to and it is now a very popular science to coming with a term called citizen science so being normal citizens you can also contribute to science by watching birds and submitting your observations to any central organization who is working on birds so where do you need to watch birds so it's not always that we need to go to a forest to see birds we have birds everywhere around us so we should not fall prey to this notion that we need to the go, go to any forest or a particular type of habitat or wetland to see birds we can simply sit on our balconies or terraces or even walk along our garden to see a wide variety of birds so we should have some basic etiquette for watching the birds you have to respect the habitat you have to respect the local people who are present you should avoid feeding and attracting the birds and you should keep a distance while you are watching birds okay so when you go some basic requirements you might be having for uh, watching you can have some field guide you can use a binocular if uh, required a camera for recording some pictures but a must thing to carry is first a water bottle and a notebook and a pen that would be a basic advice i would uh, give that when you try to watch birds try to note about the birds more than taking photographs and also use a hat so that that prevents you from hot sun and also helps you in better looking at the birds because because of the sun you might have flashy eyes and that can even also cause sunburn so use try using a cap or a hat while you are watching birds in sun so this is our basic idea about birding
and with this you this kind of notes you can make on bird in your notebook try to draw about the bird what parts of the bird i mentioned you can just say what was the color and after noting that these features you can come back and look into a field guide where these features are matching with your bird and identify the bird accordingly so and what there is another interesting way of inviting birds to your house by providing them with some enrichments like some nest box or a bird bath where birds can come in summer to have a bath or drink some water then you can use a bird feeder where you can put uh, mostly the grains for feeding on the granivorous birds and you should develop your urban spaces because we really lack some green spaces in our cities so we can use the small open spaces in our house basically a balcony or a part of a terrace to have some green plants which uh, with uh, maybe some frugivorous plants or some grasses which can be an attraction to the birds either for nesting or even for their feeding as well so this is how you can invite birds and watch them also and in in a way you are help, helping the nature by contributing towards it so i would just like to end this talk with uh, uh, like birds can serve uh, a talk from dr salim ali who is also known as the bird man of india that birds can survive without human being humans on this planet but humans may not survive without the existence of the birds so with all this i'll just like to end this talk and now we can have some interactions kids you can go with the talk anything you want to ask do you have any questions children thank you so much ma'am do you like to ask any question uh excuse me ma'am yes ma'am uh, i have learned that uh, somewhere uh, birds birds uh, <laughs> yes yes please go ahead but birds can leave uh, birds can uh, birds birds migrate to leave but it was written that uh, many birds die during migration yes it can be a chance because you see everyone might not be well fueled that means while migration birds actually gain a lot of energy because they usually don't stop for eating food because you also know when you are going for a food do you eat heavily but you eat some energy giving food right so it's like why bird also gain some good energy by taking some energy giving food and they start their flight but in case they are not adequately filled with this uh, food they might be exhaustive they might be or in the during their course of journey they might be disturbed by a storm which they might not have anticipated in your, in their way so this becomes an exhaustion for the bird as a result it may die because of energy exhaustion okay any other question sir i don't have any questions a very good afternoon to you ma'am i had very a good. question that in your last slide you had uh, like inviting birds like that type of slide you had so i wanted to ask how can i invite a pet parrot to my house okay first of all let me correct you a bit we don't have parrots we have parakeets this was mentioned by pramodhal sir during his talk and uh, so uh, if you want to you have a pet parakeet in a cage i Or don't want... i don't have because uh, there are many years uh, 
for which I have been thinking that I want to keep a parrot, but nowhere I'm able to find. So I wanted to invite actually, it. Actually, okay, okay, just a minute. Let me tell you. Uh, actually, keeping a parrot is illegal in our country. We cannot keep a parrot in a cage. Those who have kept it, this is has been an age long practice. and slowly we should encourage people never to keep a parrot because it is protected under the schedule 4 of the wildlife protection act so uh, uh, keeping a parrot is uh, similar to keeping a tiger and for both of them you can be imprisoned also so please do not keep any kind of birds in cage okay so whatever birds you are seeing in the market are actually exotic birds which are not protected under the wildlife protection act in india but still the uh, there are international bodies who are trying to stop this trade gradually and maybe there may be a day that we might not see birds in cages but we can have some practices like i had mentioned in the last slide if you want if you have parrots in your locality try to grow fruit trees okay they are very attracted towards fruits so if you have fruit trees in and around your houses you will be seeing these parakeets coming and you can sit in your balcony or your portico from there you can see these parakeets eating the birds eating the fruits okay yes, so this is how you can enjoy watching the parakeets Right? I actually enjoy watching birds on my terrace because every day when I go back to my house, I plant, I throw there many seeds. Very good. That is a very good practice. That is how you should watch birds. You should not chase the birds. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am. Good I afternoon. Have, I have a doubt that. Ma'am, after the migration, when the birds return to their home, ma'am, how can they identify their home again? Okay, uh, it is simply like when you are coming to school and you are going home. Every day, does anyone guide you? Because you, you, it is not like that, na. If you are now left, uh, because every day you are coming to school. you are also you know what is the route to your house that is inbuilt in your mind so birds also has that instinct because they are regularly coming to uh, and regularly migrating they know they have a gut instinct that we are coming from this place and we have to go back to this place and this is guided by many things like the resources available on the way as well as the Uh, polar condition of the earth north pole and south pole the magnetic north pole and south pole as well as the movement of the sun and the moon okay so all these things guide the migrating birds towards their destination and their return back to the home okay thank you ma'am okay good evening ma'am Go. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good, af good afternoon, ma'am. What, ma'am? What beak and claw does the uh, emu and the ostrich have? What kind of beak? Yes, ma'am. What kind of beak and claw does the ostrich have? Okay, beak and the claw. They has a normal beak which is made up of some material like called keratin, which is a hard material which makes up your nails. Okay, okay. you have nails. It is ha having hard material. Okay, so okay. ostrich also has ostrich and emu also have large beak made up of this hard material called keratin. and their beak is designed to feed on the uh, other their prey birds in the habitat okay and the claws if you say the claws are similar to larger nails which like you see in case of your tiger bears so claws are also designed in such a manner that they can run on the ground they are they don't fly ostrich is more on flightless birds right you have that idea so since they are not flying they are designed to walk on the land 
and run on the land okay okay ma'am okay. thank you thank you so much ma'am for sparing your precious time and making our day a memorable one by inspiring our young friends with this we have come to the end